Hello, Drake Hawk and Sad Boy Cinema here, and today I'm reviewing this throne album, Lionfish. This is the debut album from this rap duo, or rap couple as they call themselves. But yeah, these two people have been kind of popular on TikTok for a bit. I personally never heard of them until yesterday, when a friend of mine, Frostbite, you know, Th th that that random friend that no one knows about. We were talking about music and he sent me their profile and I was like, yeah, they sound pretty cool, I guess. Today, New Music Friday, he sent me their album. Uh, it was like, hey, review this. And I was like, I got you, but I gotta listen to that new Earth Gang first because God, I love me some Earth Gang. And after that new Great Dreamville release with such a mediocre J. Cole verse, I listened to this album and there are things I want to talk about, obviously. That's why I made the video, so I can talk about this album, because that's what I do here. I'm gonna start with the production, which is kind of spacey, kind of avant-garde. It has the same kind of tone throughout without sounding samey, like a lot of albums that are produced all by the same person, like this one is, can be. This album gives the same kind of vibe while still being diverse enough to where it's not annoying or grating. And another thing I love in any album is that it flows perfectly. It flows from top to bottom and sometimes you won't even notice that it switched tracks because the transitions are just that smooth and it's really one whole cinematic kind of experience with that. The IDK album, Is He Real, flows from top to bottom. The K Kendrick album, t Pab flows top to bottom. Taboo doesn't do it as much, but it flows. That's one of the things you can do on a sound design end that is subtle, but it adds so much character to the album and it makes the whole thing feel like such a quicker experience than it actually could be. Because t Pab is not a 15 minute experience. Being that this album is kind of avant-garde production in general, it does have a lot of samples, but it's not only samples of other songs. There's also vocal samples from a bunch of different people. And I think like comic book movies or something too? I don't fucking know. Like there's the Fred Hampton sample which adds so much to this track that is already one of my favorites on the album. And then on a mix standpoint, there's not really much of anything here that sounds off. There was like a guest verse or something near the back end that I thought could have been EQ'd a little better. But for the most part, the vocals sound okay. The only issue that I have with the mix is that sometimes the vocals are a little bit too subdued or a little buried under the beat. But I mean, maybe with future listens, I'll get more adjusted to that uh, and maybe figure out what they're saying more. Because sometimes I genuinely can't tell what they're saying because the beat is just too loud. Like, it's not abrasively loud or so loud that I it hurts. It just feels like the vocals need to be turned up just the slightest bit. And then I want to talk about the weakest part of the album, which in my opinion are the vocals. They're not bad by any means, but like the song structures all feel the same. It's always like one person does their thing, the other person does their thing. One person does their thing, the other person does their thing. And while that can work and you know, as long as both of their parts are strong, which for the most part they are, I don't remember there being any performances that I outright dislike. It's such a repetitive song structure that it kind of gets boring and monotonous halfway through the album. And I think this is what Migos does on their records, but I don't listen to Migos. I've never listened to Migos. I don't want to listen to Migos. I mean, City Morgue does this as well for the most part, but like, they also have hooks in between them. There's some tracks that are taken over completely by one person, which is a general thing in uh, duo albums or, you know, collaborative works where you'll have a couple solo tracks, which I don't remember there being any on here like that. But there are some tracks where it's like, Zillakami will do a hook, Sosamula will do a verse, Zillakami will do a hook, and then that's the track. You know, like my one of my favorite ones, Death Cult Intro. Um, one of my favorite City Morgue tracks. I absolutely love Zilla's hook. So Samula does his thing. But this isn't a fucking City Morgue review. This is a review of Throne. And honestly, I don't feel like the vocal performances on this are like so amazing that I come away from the album absolutely amazed. And sometimes the passivity of their verses just is not enough to carry it for me. Now for some individual performances I do like, I think the intro is a really good tone setter. Visually, what I got when I listened to the intro was it was this sort of fiery sensation, like the burning was, like the building was burning or, God damn it. Like it was some sort of fire and then this woman came in and just started vibing and you know, dancing and everything made sense when she came in and started singing and everything was just very straightforward and what was it? 
that before chaotic a little bit was a little bit more safe and a little bit more appealing and a little bit more just down to earth. The only issue with that is that when the guy comes in, the instrumental kind of switches up almost entirely. And uh, I feel like it's kind of like two different songs just kind of smashed together. Kind of like Drake and Future's Life is Good, except I don't like any part of that track. On the next track, Rain Folk, the guy opens the track. And I do, while I do like his flow and his verse overall, as soon as it starts, it sounds like J. Cole. He sounds so much like J. Cole at the start of it. He, he begins to lose that sort of delivery and cadence and vocal inflection that J. Cole does in his newer stuff as the verse goes along. But immediately, like no matter how many times I listen to this track over and over, I cannot help but hear J. Cole at the start of the verse. And it's a little distracting. For the rest of this LP, they do have their own like individual styles and performances and cadences. And I really like how the uh, female vocalist who does more singing than rapping, like she does the singing for the most part, he does the rapping. It's a good combination. And I like how a lot of the times she's doing like background vocals, like acting like an instrument on top of this already pretty lush sample based production. And it really adds a lot of character and flavor to the already flavorful production. And if I didn't say it already, I like that. However, I don't feel like enough is done on a vocal end. Now it could be because the vocals feel a little too quiet, but I can't hear half of what is being said on this album. Either my brain is just not picking out the words correctly, but I had no trouble hearing what Earth Gang was saying on their record. I had no trouble hearing what Frostbite was saying on his record. I had no trouble hearing what Blue River said on his record. I had no trouble hearing what Minus Gray said on his EP. I can't get much lyrically on this album because I can't hear the words. That obviously doesn't ring true for the entire LP. As I said, Fred Hampton is one of my favorite tracks and it's Possibly the most lyrically dense one here. And its structure is different from everything else on this record, and that helps elevate it to a higher status as well. In fact, from the hook of mitzvahs to mixed race theory, I feel like the vocals are more clear than they are on any other part of this project. Like, I don't know what it is, but it just feels more crisp. I can hear what is being said. And these are also the best tracks, not only for that, but because they're the most well-written and well-structured tracks on this entire album. And this section alone is great. My only complaint with that is that if this section of the album is so good, why can't the rest of it be at this quality? Like, I feel like the album doesn't even start till you get to V for Vanity. Because that, that the, the, the bar on Mitzvah, I, 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 I have bars, not Mitzvahs. It's a really, 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 really weird bar. And that entire hook is kind of flowed weirdly. Like I know it's vaguely avant-garde, but like it just feels like there was no care put into the syllable structure. And also now that I think about it, I think this is a solo track. I. I listened to it a few hours ago and I already don't remember. Feature wise, I feel like the features did a pretty good job on this album. They all provided, you know, what was needed for the song. They all provided, you know, different verses. Of course they provided different fucking verses. I can't remember if it was Mixed Race Theory or the feature that comes after that one, but one of those two, it feels like another mash of two different songs. It feels like the guest verse is on a different beat and then Throne is on this entirely different beat and it feels like they just ma mashed them together because it was like they're two different B-sides that neither of them were gonna release or something. So they're like, hey, why don't we just collab and do this thing? It's still a good track, but like, it just feels like a mesh. There are spots in this album that are better than others, but a lot of this album just feels okay to me. I don't feel strongly about it one way or another. I don't know, I feel like maybe I should love it more than I do, especially because I love the production and I love how well it flows in between each track and I love the themes and I love the lyrical topics whenever I can actually pick out what's being talked about. But overall, I can't say I got a lot from this entire experience. I'm feeling a five on this one. I'm giving this a five. And I know by not reviewing this album extremely highly that I'm po I'm probably throwing away a, f a potential connection that I could have, you know, possibly make a song with them. But honestly, I don't mind because I if you listen to my work, you know that I'm not the biggest fan of getting features on my shit. My, 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 my latest tape, the title track on my latest tape, is a prime fucking example as to why. If you literally look at the stats so far for streams, most people check out on that track because his performance is just that fucking bad. But yeah, I'll definitely be looking forward to their next releases in the future. That way I can 
you know, hear improvement or just get more out of their stuff and get more, you know, to listen to and just maybe get an appreciation for them that I don't have here. Yeah. Bye.